I only had her for seven weeks, but in those seven weeks, in the past few months, I've learned more than I've learned in my entire life. She was a phenomenal person. If there was one thing about her that I could say is when she would look at you, she would actually really make eye contact. You, you could tell that she was really paying attention to what you had to say. And I think um, all of us will certainly miss, miss the aspect of her friendship, her kindness, her generosity, and just her, her never-ending love for her job and the people she worked with and her students. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to miss about her. Um, you know, she was just she was just a rock. She was at the center of our staff. Um, I always found Beth to be such a, a calming presence. She was the type of person that <laughs> it didn't seem, you know, no matter how wild and crazy things were and, and how hectic the school day was and what was going on, you know, she was always calm and composed and put together and never ruffled, never yelling. And uh, she just she had a, a way about her that just kept you grounded and. You know, she was she was a lead teacher, and as a young administrator, she was you know someone I leaned on a lot, and you could go to, and you know she was a mentor for me, even though she probably didn't realize it at the time. Every email we got from her was in, engorged in positivity and had some connection to her faith and how strong her faith was, and just trying to even I think in those last few months, even trying to pass that on to us as her coworkers and her students as well, and. You know, she would just have little things like that. His shadow is, I know that his shadow is shining over me, and, and even though I'm dealing with the kind of the tough things, that she never gave up. She never stopped fighting in the way that she fought from the beginning of it. And that's something that just kind of, it carries with me now and what I want to be now as a teacher and thinking about what she, want, what she was. You know, part of you wants to be you know, really sad and broken up because you lost such a special person, but then at the same time, you know, she was so incredible. <laughs> if there's mm -hmm. ever a person who had the fast track to, to heaven and was going there, you know, she's that person. So, you know, we have faith. She had faith that things were in God's hands, and she kept telling us that. <laughs> I think she was way more accepting of it throughout this whole process than the people around her. I think the thing that I miss the most about her is Every time you we went in there, even if she wasn't having a good day, she was still smiling and very relatable to everyone and always wanted to be here and wanted to teach you everything that she could. Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm and motivation. Um, just like I said earlier, when she taught, you could just see in her eyes how much she enjoyed it. And her, we had to do a bucket list as part of an assignment, and she showed us our, her bucket list. And she just like completed so many inspiring things in her life. It just inspired me to do that also. Beth went through three different types of treatment for her cancer, none of which was successful. And as a result, um, her doctors in Pittsburgh had suggested that in order to make sure that there was nothing further, to make sure they hadn't overlooked anything, they had suggested that she consult a stomach cancer specialist in Seattle. Uh, Beth agreed and they made arrangements and the staff here knowing that one of her items on the bucket list was to fly first class for a distance. Uh, we uh, managed to get a hold of her husband Drew and upgraded her tickets round trip first class so that we could help her by again notching one more thing off of that bucket list. This is our Carpe Diem shirts that we got from Mrs. Pierce whenever she first left the school when she was diagnosed with her cancer. And um, it's like the periwinkle blue that's supposed to represent stomach cancer. And carpe diem means seize the day, which was one of her favorite sayings. And she has pictures of it all over the room and all over everything. Uh, Beth is in heaven, yes. Um, and there is no doubt in my mind that um, heaven is a better place for her presence there. Just, in a word, inspiration. Just everything that she's done in her life and just an embodiment of motivation and seizing the day carpe diem and um, just she's known for not just teaching in the classroom she's a phenomenal teacher but known for teaching outside and you know living life to the fullest and the deeper meaning of life and that's really all the connotations you get when you think of her. I'm gonna miss a lot I'm gonna miss her criticism I'm going to miss just her smiling face and um one of the things I really liked was she had Mrs. Peer's moments every Friday and she would read us like a quote or a famous story and I just loved that. It was just something good to end the week with. This is where I grew up and this is where I went to school. So I kind of think of her both as Mrs. Peer's and as Beth and kind of trying to mesh both words, worlds. 
and when I really think about her, I think about this effervescent charisma. And when people ask me like what type of teacher she was and what type of mentor she was, it just she just had this magic about her. You can't even explain it. It's just this this way that she had in the classroom and the way that she related with students and even what one of my students said today that they're going to remember the most about her and I agreed with her wholeheartedly was that you know she lived the lessons that she taught it wasn't just that she was teaching us different themes or different works about literature she lived and breathed it and I think that's what some why so many of us are attracted to her and her spirit because it was sincere it was genuine you couldn't just help it flock to her. You always think that bad things can't happen to good people, but whenever I realized what was happening, I knew that she would be strong enough to like handle whatever God threw at her. Prior to um, her succumbing to the cancer, uh, that Beth had added one more item to her bucket list, and I couldn't think for the life of me what, if you were facing this, what you would add to your bucket list, but Beth's mother said that um, she had added to her list she wanted to see everyone in heaven and uh, very emotional, very touching and so like Beth to up until even close to the end to be um, a, a wonderful person who is looking out for others and not thinking of herself. She was always there to listen when I was having an issue with a student or if I was having a bad day personally. She was just that person that I could always turn to. And, my next door neighbor that will always be next door to me. Definitely, again, just every single day is really just making it. And that's easy to say, but then her example of teaching and the way she lived her life, too, was what really showed you that each day you need to save her. And that's something you take to heart as a senior graduating and going on to bigger and better things is to really not take the gifts you're given for granted. Mm -hmm.